his last game in Chicago, Andy did not throw the ball well, did not have good command of any of his pitches. And right there was a changeup that he threw, like you said, about 55 feet. The runner takes off and it holds up as the pitch is on the outside corner for a call strike. Now it's three and two. Green at first base took off like he was headed down to second, then stopped. And it's a good thing that he did. Yeah, I was looking at the monitor and I saw green out of the corner of my eye taking off and I thought boy that's a that, that's a strike uh, throw him out at second base. The runner takes off and the pitch is fouled out of play. So confidence in Jose Canseco who strikes out a lot. Sending the runner on three and two. Nobody out here in the first inning. But like I said, uh, Conseco has been hot with the bat. He's on a 12-game hitting streak. Look at the biceps as Conseco, along with the new uh, single-season America uh, uh, baseball home run champion, Mark McGuire. They have their arms are bigger than my waist. <laughs> they are just big and strong. And Pettit's going to pick off Green at first. They've got to watch Stewart at third. Now Green in a rundown. They'll put the tag on him. Nice play by Knobloch as they hold the runner at third. So Pettit with that great pickoff helps himself here at the top of the first. And there's one gone. Andy Pettit has another pitch in his arsenal, and it's the pickoff. Uh, Sean Green made the mistake of not making sure that Andy Pettit was going home with the ball. And that great pickoff move, that long stride, Sean Green got hung out to dry. And did he ever. And the infield now will come in with one out on a 3-2 count to Kutseko. He got him. The high fastball blown by Kutseko, a big strikeout for Pettit. That's got to be a huge boost. For Andy Pettit here in the first inning. Andy Pettit trying to throw the ball high and in and gets the ball high and out over the plate. But high is the place to throw it to Jose Canseco, a real good low ball hitter. That ball had some mustard on it, and Jose Canseco was trying to hit it up to the North Bronx. And Canseco uh, kind of walking around in the dugout. I think he swung at ball four. Nevertheless, there's two gone. And Seiko now with 136 strikeouts will send up uh, Carlos Delgado. A left-handed batter who a year ago was being platooned against uh, some tough left-handed pitching is now having a fantastic year. And as you mentioned, TJ, in uh, Skydome against Pettit his last time out, he hit the longest home run in Skydome history in right field. And we were there to witness it. Yes, we were. And when you look at this young man, at, at this body that he's got, you understand that just watching him taking batting practice, tremendous bat speed. And another fastball inside, just missing now at 2-0 uh, to oh, so Delgado. Well, just to show you what the Blue Jay franchise thinks of uh, Carlos Delgado, he has been named the captain of this ball club. A first captain said John Mayberry way back years ago. And that's the breaking ball up high for ball three, three and oh. You don't so, think Andy Pettit was thinking about that home run at 2 0 count first inning, threw him a cutter, a breaking ball in the first inning? Pitchers like elephants, they have long memories. Well, you have to have a long memory when you've got 30 <laughs> home runs and 102 ribbies. And that was an off-speed breaking ball, up high ball four. It was almost like Pettit was somewhat pitching around Delgado. <laughs> <laughs> You're pitching around a left-handed hitter, and you you being a, a tough left-handed uh, pitcher. But sometimes I felt more comfortable pitching to right-handed hitters than I did left-handed hitters. If I didn't feel that that I had the, the command of my fastball away to make good pitches on the outside corner to left-handed hitter. I, I would rather walk him and uh, pitch to the right-hander and that, look what Andy Pettit did throwing a breaking ball 3-0. Cruz is back with the Toronto Blue Jays and hitting fifth of this lineup. And 
And a strike one to Jose Cruz Jr. He got off to a miserable start in 1998. Finally, the Blue Jays had to send him back to their AAA club to work some of the kinks out and build up his confidence once again. And now he is back. And since his uh, recall from the minor leagues, as Torrey and Stottlemyre looked on, Cruz with five home runs and 23 RBIs. And, of course, he was in that big trade when Bolgeric and Timlin went from the Blue Jays out to the Seattle Mariners for this young prospect and future superstar. That leave the count up at one and one. I think Jose Cruz Jr. got a little maybe just a little too full of himself and thought that he had everything wrapped up and uh, really didn't get it all going. Sent him down to uh, Syracuse, the old Yankee Farm Club, and it kind of slapped him in the face a little bit. And the change up again, almost in the same area. <laughs> That's another good job by Girardi, holding that runner at third and knocking that ball down only about 55 feet. So Andy doesn't have that good grip and command of the change up. <laughs> wow. Joe Girardi looked like a goalie in soccer there <laughs> did, trying to, uh, yeah. <laughs> now that's twice he's had to knock a couple of those down. Now the count goes to two and one now on Cruz Jr. Rodgers at first and third at two outs here at the top of the first. Up high and away now it's three and one. Well, Pettit has done just about everything he can do, I think, to get himself out of this jam. It's been his only jam. No help from anybody else. And now he's worked himself into a hole here with uh, Jose Cruz Jr. The runner will hold. And the pitch is in there for a call strike. Now it's three and two. There was an old Yankee pitcher uh, one time named Ralph Terry. And we'll see a cutter right inside here and ties Cruz up. The Ralph Terry told me one time about him playing golf. He said, don't pitch yourself out of the game in the first inning. If you're a control pitcher and you don't have your control, don't pitch yourself out of the game in the first inning. Delgado is off and the grounded towards Brochet. He will check second and throw back to Martinez. A nice scoop by Tino Martinez. Well, you got to give credit some credit. He pitched himself out of this jam. No score. Yankees coming. Knob block will lead it off. This is on the Corona Extra lineup card. Knob block, Jeter, O'Neill, Williams, Martinez, Strawberry, the DH, Lede, Rochus, and then Girardi. Here's Toronto starting defense. Stuart Cruz, Green in the outfield. Santiago, Fernandez, Gonzalez, Graybeck, and at first base, Carlos Delgado. Switched over from a catcher, couldn't do it. Brought him back up as a first baseman, and this young man has a super future. And the Blue Jay pitcher, Pat Hinkins, first pitch to Knobloch as we take a look at Hinkins' numbers. 12 and 10 on the year. 68 base on balls. He struck out 92, but better known as the workhorse. Along with Roger Clemens on this Blue Jay staff. But Hinkin last year, 264 innings, 174 and two-thirds so far here in 1998. Has had a little bit of a shoulder tenderness. Uh, he missed the start last month. Well, hit down the right field line. This will be trouble for Green, and it's off the wall. Now block around first. Green's got a gun to throw. Not in time. Good play by Sean Green in right field. An even better base running play by Knobloch, and the Yankees have a leadoff double. Pat Hinken going in with a high fastball, and Chuck Knobloch, as we've seen him do so many times, takes the ball right down the line. That's about a foot from going out of the ballpark. And Chuck thinks he's got a home run. No, I don't think so. Now watch him go hard right here. Good decision and a good stand-up slide. So Knobloch with speed down at second. That'll bring up Derek Jeter, and what a year he is having. Batting 334. That's a 334 average with 19 home runs and 77 RBIs. This is on the ground towards 
Gonzalez, so he'll pick it up and throw out Jeter. Don Block will end up at third with one out, and Paul O'Neill will have a chance to drive him in. Je Jeter setting new highs for himself almost every time he goes to the plate. I don't think he swung at the pitch he actually wanted to swing at on that first pitch from Hinkin. He was uh, got a, a hanging breaking ball and, and it really did a good job of getting the ball on the ground of playing a little team baseball and Knobloch read it. The ball was back of him and he took off for third base. Now Toronto's got to play the infield in here in the first inning. They, they can't let uh, the Yankees get too far out in front. They've got to play everything close to their vest. All you're saying on that right side, Bobby, is please don't throw anything slowing in to O'Neill. Well, that's a <laughs> fastball away on O'Neill, the first pitch. Well, like the Yankees, you know, after Toronto made the first out, they brought the infield in against Conseco with a runner at third. And here comes Toronto, so Hinkin will try to pitch his way out of it like Pettit did in the top of the first. Well hit the right field. Green will look up and it's gone. O'Neill will put the Yankees in front two to nothing. And O'Neill with his 22nd home run, he hit two last night. And in his first at bat here tonight, he goes deep. Bobby, as you well know, when you were a hitter and you had runners in scoring position, watch the high breaking ball. Your eyes would light up and Paul O'Neill's eyes lit up. And the scoreboard lit up on that one. And the bleacher creatures are happy early on <laughs> in this game. High breaking balls go a long way. Do they ever? <laughs> And Bernie will step in now. Let's take another look at that high breaking ball that hung up. Let's just see. And oh, what a sound. From a hitter's standpoint, that's one of the most beautiful sounds of all time. Not so from the pitcher, I guess. Right, TJ? <laughs> well, uh, you didn't. You don't know that much. I mean, you, you didn't hear that sound that much. Shoot, all those balls that they hit off me sounded like that. Some were on the ground. They put holes through nettles at third base, but other than that. Somebody said with all those home runs you gave up, uh, you had a little bit of loss of hearing. And you don't hear so well right now. Is that correct? Huh? <laughs> Bernie sends one into center field, but Cruz is there. So two gone for New York here in the bottom of the first. You know, as a pitcher, when you make a pitch like that, you're, you're hoping that you get lucky enough that you get by with it, that he fouls it off or pops it up. And Pat Hinkin was not lucky. Well, you got O'Neill who is uh, hot with the bat again. So Paul is not one of those guys that when he gets a hanger and he's hot that he misses. In batting practice today, I was watching him hit and he hit almost every ball hard and lined it someplace. And that's strike one to Martinez. Martinez, 25 home runs, 113 RBIs. Two years ago, Hinkin and Pettit were battling each other out uh, going down the stretch for the Cy Young. Yeah, Hinkin won the uh, Cy Young in 1996. That's popped up in the left. Easy play for Stewart. But the Yankees come back here in the bottom of the first inning. Paul O'Neill, take another look at it. Yankees two, Blue Jays nothing. Lots of Yankee hats depicting the American League Eastern Divisional Champions. Tonight, a lot of youngsters on hand. It is a beautiful night for baseball. Tony Fernandez leads it off and the first pitch is fouled back and out of play. Well, the ex Yankee having a good year, batting 315, six home runs at 58 RBIs. Now, the switch hitter in this Blue Jay lineup. He will pop it up into right field. Should be an easy play for O'Neill. It is, and there's one gone. 
So, TJ, two pitches here in the top of the second. Pettit's already got one out. Much better than the first inning, and that last pitch was the breaking ball that Andy doesn't feature that often. Many times, pitchers, after your team has clinched, uh, yes, you still like to win, but you like to get the pitches. I know I like to get the pitches that I was having trouble with ready for the playoffs. And if I was having trouble with my changeup and curveball, then I would throw it in situations that you would never throw it in. And there's the breaking ball up high to Santiago. Santiago has been hurt most of the year. And that's well hit and fast Jeter. Quickly over is Lede. Uh, Santiago will hold at first. A uh, one out base hit for Benito Santiago. Watch him get a fastball there right out on the plate and turned it just by Derek Jeter. Santiago, they could really have used him this year. What a great catcher he was, or is. And with a young staff, and even with Roger Clemens as the veteran, love to pitch to a guy like Santiago. Well, he did make his first start until September the 6th. I saw the about a day ago, or a couple of days ago, against Boston. We'll take a look at uh, Graybeck with one out. Here in the second inning, Yankees lead it two to nothing. Graybeck uh, playing second base tonight, so Tony Fernandez moves to third. And one of the things I think, uh, TJ, that is different in this Blue Jay ball club, and certainly they are responding and playing better because of it. That's hit hard and past Doblock in the center field. Quickly over is Williams. Santiago on his way to third, and the throw will be off of Brooks's glove, and Graybeck takes advantage of that high throw from Williams in center, so he moves to second. Santiago not known for his speed, but getting a uh, Graybeck getting a ball up the middle. I think Knobloch might have been uh, shielded a little bit by Tim McClellan at second base. Just a little screen play right there. And Bernie Williams did something that an outfielder, Bobby, you know, should not do. Missed the cutoff, man. The guy's already got third base. You don't want the batter to go to second base on that. Takes a double play out of order for the ninth place hitter. And this is Gonzalez. That's a pine outside for a ball. So that uh, high throw from Bernie does a couple of things besides taking the uh, double play out of order. It puts the tying run down at second base in scoring position. There you go. Well, everybody knows about uh, the new home run champion. 62 home runs for Mark McGuire and what a Outstanding and memorable feat that is. Alex Gonzalez tied a major league record last night of his own and six strikeouts in one game. <laughs> Those are the type of records that you really don't want. <laughs> Still a young hitter uh, learning how to hit. That's off at the end of the bat. Nice play by Nabla. As he throws out Gonzalez, Santiago comes on to score. It's 2 1 New York. Gonzalez did a good job that sinker down and away. That was a good pitch by Andy Pettit. It was a good play by Chuck Knobloch getting himself turned around. That's easy. That play right there is so easy to throw the ball away at first base. Knobloch did a good job. So Shannon Stewart bats for the second time and that pitch inside for a ball. Stewart walked back at the first when Pettit ran into all kinds of problems. But pitched his way out of it. But the Blue Jays come back here in the second inning to score one so far. Off the end of the bat and into center field. So Grayback will come on to score. And it's a tie game at two. Right. 
Mike Stottlemyre and Torrey looking on as Andy Pettit gives up a cutter inside. It doesn't quite get in, though, and it jammed him. It jams Shannon Stewart, but to watch Joe Girardi uh, right on the inside half. Uh, you want the cutter being in off the plate. So with Green stepping in, Stewart with good speed again at first base. Ground ball to hole and fast on block. So Green is two for two. Stewart will end up at third. And another hit for the Blue Jays here in the second inning. Blue Jays now with four hits here in the second. Watch Joe going away. Now watch where the ball is. Right on the outside part of the plate. The ball was up just slightly, but still a pretty good pitch. You've got to be able to pitch away to left-handed hitters in this ballpark to be successful. Boy, Green taking advantage of that uh, big hole between first and second to pick up his second hit. We'll see if he stays a little bit closer to first. He was picked off back in the first inning, so Seiko will come to bat with two men on. He struck out his first time up. But Bobby, how many times, though, when you were up there, knowing that there was that hole at first base, and you kind of knew that they were going to pitch you away, that you, you were looking out there, and how many times did you just take it and do, do like Sean Green and just hook the ball in that hole? Well, you look to take advantage of that. I mean, if you get if you get the uh, pitch to pull, you might as well take advantage of it. Now it's one at one. And Seiko hit a long one off of Pettit in his uh, last outing at the Sky Dome. Seems to me that was on a 3-2 pitch, and uh, the ball was middle half of the plate. You either want to pitch Jose down and away or the up and in. That's the old way. That's about the fifth changeup that Andy Pettit has bounced in front of home plate. Nice play again by Girardi. As I mentioned, Kitseko struck out back in the first inning, and... He has done that a lot of times this year, more times than anybody in the American League. So now he uh, leads it with 136, which is not new for him. He normally strikes out uh, quite a few times during the course of the season. Toronto's got three, uh, three out of the top five in there. Swing hard in case you hit it. You know, the, the way I looked at it, Bobby, I don't know how you did, but a strikeout sometimes is better off than putting the ball in play because then you stay out of the double play. But an out's an out, whether it's a strikeout or a pop-up. It's just certain situations you want to stay out of the strikeout. Canseco, the first player in baseball to post the uh, 40 home run and 40 stolen bases in the same season. And this is high and deep in the left field. If it's fair, it is trouble. And it is big time trouble. It's a three-run home run. For Canseco. Canseco's 42nd home run of the year. And I will bring him to 99 RBIs. And now Toronto will take the lead back away from New York. Jose Canseco did something right here. He's up on that bat about two inches uh, before he was down on the knob like most sluggers go, but it was almost as if he was looking for the cutter inside to shorten the bat and shorten his swing so he could get the bat head out on that cut fastball, which he did. And Delgado now, it's still two outs. And he's going in, and Jose shortened up on that bat and got the ball down and hit a big fly ball. So the Blue Jays have scored five runs here at the top of the second, highlighted by that Kitseko home run. 16th time at the Yankees. Check that 17th time now that the Yankees have given up five or more runs in one inning. Now it's two balls and a strike to Delgado. Our 
Martinez will put it away, but big damage done by the Blue Jays here in the second. They come up with five big runs, and it's 5-2 to Toronto. Strawberry leading off, and that's the second pitch of the inning popped up to the shortstop, Gonzalez. So two pitches here at the bottom of the second, one gone for New York. That'll bring up Ricky Leday. So new life now for Henkin, who had taken a pounding in the bottom of the first inning, giving up a home run to O'Neill. Yankees lead it, led it two to nothing. Now it's a 5-2 Toronto. And Lede getting another start in left field for New York. Of course, the month of September is the big call-up month when the rosters can expand back to 40 men. And the Yankees have called up several players, including Lede. Well hit in the right field. That'll be a one-out base hit for Lede. And like Sean Green in right field, uh, Ricky Lede, a great prospect for New York. Ricky Lede with that semi-high leg kick. Looks a little bit like a Kirby Puckett. He gets that fastball away and just hooks it out into right field. Oh, I tell you, Bobby. From what we've saw, what, from what we saw of him earlier this year here in New York, and what I saw of him down in uh, Columbus when he came in uh, Charlotte, this guy's got a bright future. Very bright. And Joe Torre still pondering uh, what he wants to do as far as the playoff roster is concerned. There may be a player or two that you wouldn't think of that Joe Torre may keep on this ball club. I know he wants to go with 10 pitchers. And until I think TJ the other division winners have been announced and that they know and who they're going to play in the playoffs. I think that's when you'll really see uh, Joe Torre beginning to start to jockey his uh, roster. Well it, it looks like the uh, West is going to go down to the last few games because Texas and Anaheim play each other five times coming up in the last 17 games. Brocious has a seven game hitting streak. That'll be a base hit so make it eight. For Brocious as the Yankees come back with a couple of men who are on now with base hits and that'll bring up Joe Girardi. Hinkin is a high fastball hitter I mean pitcher. And you see right there, he throws that good riding fastball, gets a lot of pop-ups, and when he's not on or his uh, fastball is a little less than its best, he'll give up a lot of base hits. But as you said, Bobby, earlier, he's a battler. He's the workhorse. He's the guy out there that, uh, until Roger Clemens came over, that was going to go to the mound about 35, 36 times a, uh, a season. Well, Tim Johnson looking on as this Blue Jay ball club four and a half games back of Boston in the wild card. So this game is extremely important to them. Not that important to the Yankees since they've already wrapped it up in the East. Maybe for wins and trying to be the winningest club. But normally after you've wrapped it up your manager will give a couple of your key players, you know, two or three of them the, not, the next day night off. Uh, not here because of the Blue Jays uh, battling. Well, as, uh, as Joe said uh, when we interviewed him uh, during batting practice, with Toronto and Boston coming in, you really can't let any of your big guys out because it's not fair to either one of them. you, you got to play your best players out there and uh, try to do the best job you can. Inside and low. Now it's ball two, two and one. Santiago taking his page out of Joe Girardi's book right there, blocking that ball. Actually, he didn't block it, stuck his glove out and caught it. The ball hit right off home plate. Santiago, as we mentioned, on the disabled list and made his first start in 1998 uh, on September the 6th uh, in a car accident in the winter, banged up the knee. And he banged it up pretty darn bad and just now coming back to play. 
There go the runners, and the pitch is swung on and fouled back and out of play. So Joe Torrey starting the runners. Down by three. Well, pretty good hit and run guy at the plate. Joe Girardi has hit and run uh, many times this season. That time he got a high fastball. You see, he's a little disgusted with himself, thought that he should have done a little more with that pitch than what he did. But it's better fouling him off than swing and miss. Hey, when you are already the champions and you've got 102 wins underneath your belt, you can try a few little things. They catch the infielders out of position. Oh, what a pitch on the outside corner as Girardi is gone. Now, uh, Hipkins striking out Girardi, two men out. The problem with being a catcher is you can't complain a whole lot with a pitcher's pitch. And this is a slider or cut fastball outside, and that's that's one of those nasty, nasty pitches that Joe's just got to said, okay, Richie, Richie Garcia, the home plate umpire, you gave Pat Hinkin that. Make sure that you give my guy the same pitch. It's so nasty that you almost have to have a 10-foot pole to reach it. Well, now, you, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Knobloch will step in for the second time. He doubled off the wall his first time up. That's way up high. That ball was just one of those uh, pitches that Hinken threw saying, hey, Chuck, don't be looking out on home plate trying to hit the ball to right field like you did the first time up. And that was just a straighten him up pitch. Nothing new for Knobloch. He'll take one for the team. Yankees have a lot of guys that can score some runs along with Jeter leading the American League in runs scored. Now block with 107 himself. So man, if you're a third, fourth or fifth place hitter in this lineup, you got two guys with those kind of runs. You know they're on base a lot. That'll be out of play and it's a one ball two strike count. And all you ask as a third place hitter or a cleanup hitter or a fifth place hitter, get those guys on in front of me. It makes me a better hitter. Give me a chance <laughs> to drive them in. If you can recall, uh, Sal Bando drove in over 100 runs with the A's back in the early 70s and, and hit like 239. And what it was, Campanaris and Dick Green and those guys were getting on base, moving over. Bando get a little uh, ground ball out, fly out, drives runs in. A little blooper out of the center field. It will fall in front of Cruz. Around third is Lede, and he will come on to score. It's 5-3 Toronto. A two-out base hit by Knobloch. Knobloch now two for two. That did not sound very pretty. That was an inside fastball. Chuck, the reason I say it didn't sound very pretty, Chuck got jammed on it big time. And Cruz came in. I think he... He had a little better chance on that ball. He forgot maybe that he was on uh, natural grass and not the AstroTurf at Sky Dome where you've got to lay back on that ball. But he kind of laid back to play it on the bounce. Knobloch takes the base hit and RBI. Jeter who grounded out in the first. The Yankees have been so good all year long at driving in runs but two men out and getting those key hits at the right time. I don't think you'll see Derek Jeter. You see him motion right there. He boom, get up, got to get down, got to use my hands more. You will not see him take the same swing this at bat that he did the first time. Good fastball swung on and throwing two now to Jeter. And, and this is a typical Pat Hinkin fastball in the upper part of the plate or upper part of the strike zone right over the plate. And then that's where he pitches from the belt to the uh, letters. Waste pitch outside, now it's one and two. Well, what is the uh, potential of Derry Jeter as he looks at Brocious at second? And Knobloch at first. 
He's got 19 home runs. That's the most he's ever hit in his career. 77 RBIs. That's the most. As he continues to develop and mature, this is his third postseason year. He was on the World Series championship in 1996, Rookie of the Year. And he's not even close to reaching his potential. <laughs> How would you like to have some stock in him? That's where you buy low and sell high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his stock market would be over 10,000. Yeah, I know. <laughs> With a lot of other people around it. <laughs> Got that million dollar smile and very marketable. And he will strike out here, chasing a high fastball. The Yankees do come back with one run in the bottom of the second. It's 5 3 Toronto. And Anski. How about that? <laughs> Anski means Yanks when you put it in the proper sequence. See how smart I am? Isn't that unbelievable? That's what I, I figured that out on my own. You know, like I'm a Scrabble player of some, that's some what sort. An, that's, that's what an Oklahoma education will do for you. Thanks oh, a you. lot. <laughs> All right, I got you on your home run, Dio, so now you're going to get back at me, right? Oh, no. Yeah, you are. No, no, no. <laughs> Jose Cruz Jr. leads it off for the Blue Jays here in the third. He is 0 for 1. The Blue Jays came up with five runs in the second. That's the breaking ball. Now it's 0 and 2. He's allowed five earned runs at each of the last five starts. The last start was only two innings. A good pitch there, striking out Cruz. He didn't like the call. So three pitches and a strikeout for Pettit to lead off here in the third. Well, you remember the ball that uh, they called Joe Girardi out? Joe Girardi didn't say anything, went right back to the dugout. Pitcher's pitch right there. You didn't need a 10 foot pole, just got to get your thumbs roasted if you swung at it. Like a pretty good pitch to me. And Pettit thought so too. Tony Fernandez brings his 11 game hitting streak with an 0 for 1 here in the third. That's a strike with a breaking ball. Good good first pitch for Andy Pettit. That, 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 that curve ball, if you watch David Wells throw, throws a lot of first pitch curve balls, and that's a good pitch for Andy. Bobby, with the pennant clenched and everything, and Andy Pettit struggling here on the mound, you've got to get him back on track. You, you've got to get him uh, the way Andy Pettit can pitch. You just put the ball and chain and the stake out there, and you stake him out there and say, Andy, you, you know, you're going to go six, seven innings, pitch until you, you get yourself right. And if he gives up six, eight runs, uh, ten runs, he, he gives them up. But you've got to get this young man back and going again. Now he's falling behind three and one, which he has been doing a lot. His control has been off. He has pitched way behind a lot of batters and not in front. That's sliced, but fouled out of right field line. Well, Torrey and Stylemeyer, they have to be concerned not only with uh, Pettit and the way of uh, he has pitched the last four or five times out. Uh, Rabu, who pitches tomorrow, he will face off against Roger Clemens. He's trying to get himself back on track. El Duque Orlando Hernandez has struggled a bit. Uh, a little tapper foul, and of course, you know as well as everybody else, uh, especially Joe Torrey and Stylemeyer, if you go into a short game divisional series, Pitching is what will win for you. And when you get in the playoffs, basically, if you've got the strong pitching, you've got the upper hand. They've got Wells and they got David Cohn. What a job they did up at Boston. Wells uh, didn't win his ball game, but David Cohn matching up against Pedro Martinez. What a pitching duel that was. Bobby, 
if you just recall all the teams that you played on, and even back in the 96 Yankee team, they won because of pitching, starting pitching, but out of the bullpen. A short series, like you said, is dominated by pitching. Well, a one out walk to Fernandez. Third walk given up by Pettit. That'll bring up Santiago. Last time up, Santiago got the ball up about belt high and out on the plate for a base hit. Don't do anything different. Just lower your sights and throw the ball down a little bit, but keep it away, and you'll get a nice little 6-4-3. Up high to Santiago. He had a heck of a year with Philadelphia back in 1996, uh, hitting 30 home runs, and then uh, tried the free agent market. And so Toronto liked what they saw in him. They knew that they were going to, going to have a pretty good pitching staff and a young pitching staff, and they needed a guy like Santiago to be their receiver. And then he hurt himself with a car accident to start 98 off, and he's uh, just now working his way back in the lineup. You, you don't know, Bobby, how important it is to have a Joe Girardi back at the plate or a Santiago or a Carlton Fisk or a Thurman Munson. Guys that know how to catch and they can do some stuff with the bat. But they don't have to be awesome hitters, but what they do to help those pitchers, it's invaluable. Santiago from Ponce, Puerto Rico. 33 years old. He will go into some of those terrible hitting slumps and you almost have to give him uh, two or three days you know rest to get him back on track again but a uh, heck of a receiver as you mentioned. Guzman coming back now I mean his arm is sound and uh, he's back throwing bullets for Toronto of course everybody knows about the rocket Roger Clemens to go along with uh, Williams and that's going to be another hit for Santiago. Quickly over his Lede, he will hold Fernandez at second. Now after the strikeout, a walk, now a base hit, and two men on for Toronto. So Pettit in trouble again. This is another cutter inside that doesn't quite get in there, and Santiago got the head of the bat out. Well, what a job Ricky Lede does. Come over and cut that ball off. For a rookie, he plays left field extremely well. Look at this ball. Look at him right on that. Uh, there's a hitting coach down at uh, Oklahoma State, or was, Gary Ward, that teaches. You saw how he was just firmed up on that front side, teaches that you hit with a soft front side with a with a bent front knee. And I've, uh, I've never seen a golfer do that. I've never seen a tennis player do that. I've never seen a baseball player do that. That was perfect. Looked like Bobby Mercer from the right side. Now, well, Grayback will step in. He had a base hit his first time up. Toronto now with seven hits and we're only one out here in the third. That 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 pitch right there Bobby that that's one that, that is just missing. If, if Andy's about three or four inches more towards home plate that that's a strike all night long and Richie Garcia will call it. Uh, breaking ball this time in there for a call strike. Well you know Pettit has just missed a lot of times with pitches. Could that be. Uh, what about changing the uh, position on the mound you know changing your foot position there. I'm just you know I'm just throwing things out. I don't know a thing about pitching. Yeah but you do, but you knew how to hit them though. Only if they threw it right down the middle. <laughs> That's outside for a ball two and one. All right, but you talk to Stylemeyer, you talk to Tory. They say there's nothing wrong with him physically. It may be mentally that he's challenging himself now and having a little problem with. You know, when I would have trouble on the mound throwing strikes, I I would move on the rubber someplace where I never pitched from before, just to kind of have something different happen. 
Just missing outside, and it's ball three, three, and one. It, it, Those it's three like pitches have just missed outside. They they've just been right there, and, and Bobby, it's 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 kind of like you're you're putting poorly, and you you go get the ugliest putter you can get, and you you play with that three or four rounds, and then you go back to stroking the ball well again. It, it's just a mental thing. You you heard Joe say it. Sometimes your your mind leads your body, and, and I think that's what's happened to Andy right now. Runners hold, and it's lined right to Martinez, and he'll put the tag on Santiago. So a good defensive play by the Yankees saves another run. But the Yankees are behind by two. It's 5-3 Toronto. Back at the stadium, bottom of the third inning, Paul O'Neill coming to the plate. But what did Paul O'Neill do as we flash back to the first inning? Oh, the beautiful sound of a two-run home run as the Bleacher Creatures, they love it. And the Yankees took a two-to-nothing lead, but as O'Neill comes to bat here in the third, Yankees are behind now by two as he fouls that first pitch back out of play. Two guys, unlike Yankee hitters in the past, talking about from the left side, Tino Martinez and Paul O'Neill. Most of the Yankee hitters from the left side before them, power hitters, they like the ball down and in. Right. These guys like the ball up and out over the plate. Paul O'Neill, if you throw him away down, he'll hit the ball to left field. If you throw him up and away, he'll hook it and hit it into right field. Well, he goes the opposite way this time for a base hit, so at least Hinton kept him in the kept him in the ballpark for a leadoff base hit for O'Neill. Well, this could be a slugfest tonight. There's 13 hits already in the game. We're only in the bottom of the third. You see, that ball had a lot of home plate, and it was just about belt high or slightly above. And you don't throw that to Paul O'Neill, like Bobby said. Good high ball hitter. And Bernie Williams, a good any ball hitter. Williams flying out to center field his first time up. Maybe he will try to take advantage of that big hole between first and second. Up high for a ball. Probably what happens to pitchers when you you think you have good stuff and you're throwing the ball and, and they're hitting it you you, tr you try and throw it harder or you try and throw it microscopically to a uh, better position on the plate and you end up throwing it less. That's back up the middle off the glove of Hitkin. He will get the lead run. So one gone. If he comes up with it cleanly they may turn it into a double play. But just to knock it down and uh, throw a man out, that's a pretty good job. It's a good job, but he gets squared up. You see how his body's right there? His glove was down, and then Bernie hit the ball hard, and he was fortunate that the ball hit his glove. And, and then after it hit it, it just fell just in back of him. Right on the rubber. Makes a good throw. Gonzalez did a good job of getting out of the sliding Paul O'Neill. All right, we'll see what Tino can do. He fought out the left field his first time up. He goes to the right side and takes advantage of that big hole. Base hit for Martinez. Bernie on his way to third, and he will make it. So runners now at first and third, and only one out for New York and Strawberry. read the ball real good just boom right there the ball wasn't anywhere close to him a lot of times the runner at first base has to slow up because the ball is in a, a chance of, uh, of hitting him that time the ball was nowhere near Bernie and he could run at full speed right from the time the ball hit Martinez back so that's just clear instinct on the base pass to be able to go from first to third like that you get a good read at it as it's going out into right field you time yourself around second Nothing that the coach could do for you. Strawberry, who uh, flied out to the shortstop his first time up, will get a chance to hit with a couple of men on. 
the straw man with 24 home runs and 56 RBI. And they will try a little bit of a trick. <laughs> and a darn near trick Tito a little bit at first base. Last time that that play worked, <laughs> my uh, my hair wasn't gray. <laughs> <laughs> Deep in the right field. It may not be deep enough, though. Deep enough to score. They let the ball fall in front of them. They miscommunicated in the outfield. Bernie will come on to score, and it's 5 4 Toronto. What a break for the Yankees. Green came over, got, uh, Cruz came over, and nobody could come up with it. They just miscommunicated. Bobby, that was one of those uh, Cruz looked like he was calling for the ball, and then you could see Green started to back up. And nobody could go any place on that play because uh, Tino had to respect that the fly ball, and that was a very catchable fly ball. And Ricky Latte with a good swing, fouling that one, backing out of play. Well, that's a gift. And Strawberry will take it, and so will the Yankees. Bobby, you said something a little earlier before uh, Strawberry got that hit. When you were running bases, did you use your coach as much, or did you just know where the outfielders were and then use your speed and where you could go? I used mostly my own instincts on where I could go and how far I could go. Willie at third base and Jose Cardinal at uh, first base. for a ball two and one in the National League we used to get base running um, sessions from Maury Wills every spring uh, maybe three or four times as pitchers because you know pitchers had to hit and Mel Queen and Timmy Johnson looking on but how to run bases what to do how to look uh, and, and the first thing more Maury said when you get the first base if you're a pitcher or whatever look see where your outfielders are and then if you know where they are when the balls hit you you know if they've got to run left or right to the ball and and then you can run better and you also have to know what kind of arm they have and what kind of flexibility and speed they have in the outfield in order to get to the ball a pie ball three three and two with only one out. Pinkins got to be thinking, why me? Why me? I don't have my best stuff. I give up a fly ball, a sure out, and here I'm in trouble. Three and two. Well, it, it looks like this game is going to be whoever gets the last hit <laughs> is going to win it. And that's going to be trouble down the left field line. Stewart with a chase, and it'll fall in front of him. Up against the wall. Martinez will come around to score the tying run. It goes into the stand. It becomes a ground rule double, and Ricky Lede is two for two. Well, the Yankees, they just continue to come back at you and fight and claw and get base hit. 3 2, Ricky Lede. That's a good pitch. Shannon uh, Stewart made a good effort, and that ball hit. You could see the spin on the ball. When the ball hit the warning track, it bounced almost 90 degrees right into the stand. So, uh, pretty good performance by Lede and the Yankees as Johnson looks on in his first year as the skipper of the Blue Jays. And it's 5 5, and it's up to Brocious with one out to put the Yankees ahead. Yankees now with eight base hits. Check that. That's nine base hits versus Toronto seven. And I want to tell you that we are in the third inning. <laughs> and only one out in the third. Now it's one and one to Brocious. One of the things Tim Johnson tried to tell his um, players here you're coming in you're in a pennant race you're in a wild card race you're in 
New York. You're in Yankee Stadium. This is fun, guys. Go out there and play like it's fun. Now, you can't be having a lot of fun giving up nine hits, but, you know, that's what you have to get across to your young players, Bobby, because you, you can't come out here in this stadium playing the uh, division winners and going, and, and you're all clutched up. Two balls and a strike to Brochus. Line in the right field. What a play by Green. A diving catch. Strawberry will tag. Come on, and he will score. Good play by Strawberry. The Yankees will take a 6-5 to five lead. Now, that's a heads-up play by tagging up at third on that great play by Green in the outfield and beating the throw. You've got to time that perfect. Bobby, you were saying that uh, you go on instinct, and that's exactly what Daryl Strawberry did right there. Brocious hit the ball just to let that little inside out swing he's got. And what a play by Sean Green. Not only can he hit, but he can field and a good arm, and he makes a good throw. And you see Daryl right there, boom, a good stand up slide. He's just got his foot in. But with Daryl Strawberry, that's just instinctive baseball. And Green uh, up with the assist leaders in the outfield. He's got 13 in right field. And Girardi takes the ball down low. Yankees now six and the Blue Jays five. You would never know that the Yankees had clinched the American League Eastern Division. There has never been any let up in this ball club from day one. And there won't be any let up in the ball club when the season is over with. Almanzar and Dave Steve now warming up for Toronto. That's right, Dave Steve. He is back. Good pitch swung on and missed strike. One, two, and one. And I tell you, there's another ball club uh, look, doing a little scoreboard watching tonight. The ball club from the Fins. Yeah, I guarantee you they're looking. When, when they saw that five spot come up, uh, Blue Jays, oh, no. <laughs> And this might be the only time they're cheering for the Yankees in their history. <laughs> it's a little light whisper cheer, but it's a cheer, you know. <laughs> well, we're talking about the wild card. Let's take a look at it. Toronto and Texas four and a half games back of Boston now. So the guys up at Beantown, they can hear those footsteps right behind them. About Seven, eight, nine days ago, they had an eight or nine game lead in the wild card. Well, hit in the center field. Cruz on the run. He's got his back to it, and it's over his head. Lede comes around to score, and it's a two-out double by Girardi, and the Yankees will take a 7-5 lead. They cease to amaze me. Uh, you would not think Joe Girardi would have this kind of pop in his back. You see that slider? That's pretty good pitch right there. And Cruz was going after the ball. He kind of misran right there. He was running one way, and the ball was slicing back to center field. You see him there running a little circle route. Joe Girardi hit that ball a long way to be a slider down and on the outside part of the plate. That play there may show that immaturity of Jose Cruz Jr. in center field. And that's strong one in odd block. Block two for two tonight with an RBI and a run scored. The Yankees with 10 base hits and seven runs, and Knobloch was going downtown on that one. He just forgot to put the token in. <laughs> Boy, Hankin could have been out of this thing with the fly ball to center field between uh, Cruz and Green. 
How costly was that? Well, it's costing three runs. play and Knobloch may have hurt himself. He swung, fouled the ball back and out of play and then dropped the bat immediately and grabbed his left wrist. Now here comes Gene Monahan and Joe Troy. Dean Palmer of the Texas Rangers one time took a swing, a mighty cut and Troy is a right bicep. They was out almost a year. We were doing the game that night. They were playing the Twins. We saw the swing, and but who was it earlier this year that swung the bat and hurt his wrist? Uh, oh no, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. about a year or two ago took the check swing and uh, hurt his wrist. This is what, boy, you don't want to see that here. Well, you can see the knob block holds the bat very lightly in his hands, and that swing there. Somehow twisted his wrist or sprained his wrist with that full swing. Now he talked to, uh, you can see him holding the left wrist there. He talked a long time to Monahan and a long time to Joe Torrey. They didn't do anything to it. And Knobloch appears to be all right. Now we won't know until, <laughs> until he takes another swing on whether he really is all right or not. Well, the thing about it, Chuck doesn't want to come out. But then, too, you've got 19 games left until the real season starts. Again, the Again, second season. The second season. You've got that right. And that pitch is fouled uh, off of Santiago this time. So <laughs> Santiago takes the brunt of that foul. If you've got a good fastball, and, and Bobby Hinkin does. You see Chuck holding that uh, right thumb off. Now he tightens it up. If you got somebody that hurt their wrist and they come back, unless they're fooling you, you, you want to come back with a hard fastball inside and force them to get that bat around. I could tell you with that swing right there, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> if, his, if his wrist was hurting him real bad, he wouldn't be able to swing the bat like that. Well, that's a good sign. Still one and two on Knobloch with two outs. Pinkin doesn't have good command tonight either. Uh, you see Santiago right there was moving inside and Hinkin threw the ball up and away. Santiago knows that you want to try to pound Chuck Knobloch inside. You see him looking at him right there. Catchers also study feet. How you stand in the batter's box from uh, at bat to bat and the pitch to pitch. Outside and it's ball three, three and two. The Yankee hitters are very patient at the plate. They won't help you out. High ball four. So Knobloch works him for a walk. And now there's two men on for New York and they've batted around. Now well, the Blue Jays pitching uh, in the American League as a rank at this particular time. Well, they're, they're third in the league in, uh, in ERA next to uh, the Yankees are first. So you've got the Two of the three best pitching staffs in the American League. And that man right there, Mel Queen, is one of the reasons for it. Veteran pitching coach. Been around a long time, seen a lot of things. Well, with Jer Derek Jeter coming to the plate, he is 0 for 2. The Yankees have now batted around 32 times here in 1998. So Jeter becomes the ninth hitter in this inning. Jeter already one for uh, Jeter already 0 for two and he's just in the third inning. Not good for the uh, batting average. 
Down low for a ball. Especially <laughs> you get in those uh, extra inning ball games and go like 0 for 7. You can have a little something good going. In. <laughs> That's something Jeter does not want to do, being second in the American League batting race to, G uh, to Williams. Hinkin has already thrown a lot of pitches like Pettit. That's the breaking ball down low. Now it's uh, two balls and a strike to Jeter. That's the first curve ball that Pat Hinkin has thrown tonight. He's been going with the slider, kind of like Andy Pettit goes with his cutter a lot. He's got a good breaking ball, and, and that was it right there. Unfortunately, if you only throw it once every three innings, you don't have good command of it. two home runs last night and 118 runs scored celebration in Boston Bernie battling Jeter last time the Yankees saw the battle in the uh, batting race went Mattingly and Winfield and it came down the last day down low ball three three and two This might be Pat Hinkins' last batter. If he doesn't make a good pitcher, you know, he's a good pitcher, but you can't let the game get out of hand with your ace out there scuffling around on the mound. And with Paul O'Neill coming to the plate. 68 pitches now for Hinkin. That's a little over 20 per inning. Is that good or bad? If you were Tommy John, that was excellent. If you were now Pat you, Hinkin, that that's not very good. If you were Tommy John, you'd be settling down out of that sinker ball and really be sinking, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Bobby, if, if they had pitch counts when I first came up into baseball, I could never have pitched. <laughs> Here goes the runners, and the pitch is bounced right back to Hinkin. So Jeter now 0 for 3, but the Yankees bat around. They come up with four here in the bottom of the third. Some sloppy play by the Blue Jays, and they open the gates up. For the Yankees, 7 5, New York. Take a look at this. This really helped the Yankees out and hurt Pat Hinton. I got it, I got it, I got it. You take it. <laughs> what are those type of deals? Sean Green was uh, going back, and, and, and this is what you have to do. Okay, you have a young ball club. Sean Green's young, Cruz is young. You, you get the guys down there, you explain what's going to happen. And you don't want that to happen again. So the Blue Jays will have to try to battle back again as Gonzalez, the ninth place hitter, leads it off here in the fourth. So Andy Pettit with his second reprieve of the game. And he's got a two run lead. You, you know, you can take a mistake like that, and if something positive comes out of it, it it's, it's not that bad. But you tell that to Pat Hinkin right now, and he may bite your head off. <laughs> <laughs> like the Tasmanian devil. It's the end of the year. <laughs> and we don't have much time left. A little tapper back to Pettit. So Gonzalez is gone. And that'll bring up Shannon Stewart. Tasmanian devil, huh? Good pitch right here by Andy Pettit. Sinker away. That's what he's been trying to get over the plate and has not been fortunate enough to throw it for a strike. We'll see if he can uh, tighten the lid on his cap right now and uh, get back to pitching like Andy Pettit. All right, Shannon Stewart, who's officially uh, one for one. He's walked. He had a base hit up the middle. 
produced an RBI and came around to score in the second when the Blue Jays scored five off of Pettit. Outside for a ball. Now it's one and one. Different style for Pettit pitching in the last, I would say, uh, four times out, maybe. Uh, using a lot more off-speed stuff. When he started the year, that's outside for ball three. When he started the year, it was about 70% cutters, 30% fastballs. Bobby, and, and to me, the, that should be just flip-flop. You should have about 70% fastballs because that's the pitch that is the best pitch in baseball. Tough play for Jeter, but he makes it easy. Dirk can pick him up and lay him down, and Jeter, with a nice play, at short. And watch this. A tough play, maybe for some shortstops, but we get to see J Derek Jeter do this all the time. That's just a ho-hum routine play. Yeah, really. Shannon Stewart, a good fastball away. And the reason I say 70-30 fastballs, the reason his cutter is good is because he had a good fastball, or has a good fastball. And, and the batters have to respect it. But when you start throwing cutter, 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 you almost turn yourself into a, uh, a Jim Abbott type, where it's just, if it's not powered. That's Sean Green, and he pulls it foul. And right here, Sean Green, throw him away throw him away fastballs not cutters away then when you throw the cutter to the outside part of the plate he's got to take a swing at it if it's just barely on green is six foot four kind of a lean guy about 190 pounds six foot four one nine oh but still developing at only 25 years of age he swings and misses at that one and it's two balls and two strikes to Green with two men out. But boy, he's got that short, compact swing. And when he makes contact, the ball just jumps off his bat. That'll get away from Girardi, and the count goes to three and two. Green has also played uh, many outfield positions. He plays all three, as a matter of fact, right, left, and center. But Johnson thinks that uh, he is his best right fielder with that arm that he has out there, and I agree. Swing and a miss, strike three. Girardi hangs on to it, so Pennant has his easiest inning of this game, and the Yankees lead it seven to five. What can you say about Dave Steve? But went down to spring training, uh, kind of like Catfish and Gidry and all those guys do, go down there, throw a little batting practice, be a guest instructor. Threw the ball so well, he said, hey, you know, uh, guys, uh, I'd, I'd like a chance maybe to try to come back. And come back he did. He's in the big leagues, one and one. I know he pitched very, very well with the Syracuse Sky Chiefs. Well, his last appearance for the Blue Jays after having a great career for them, he retired, was in August of 1992 before 98. So I guess he has heard all the broadcasters, all the radio broadcasters, everybody talking about the pitching in baseball today as Paul O'Neill fouls that pitch back out of play. And even though he's 40 plus, he said, well, you know, if they are right, maybe I'll try a comeback. I feel pretty darn good. <laughs> and guess what? Here he is. If his stuff is as nasty or half as nasty as it used to be. Well, not on that pitch there. O'Neill will go deep for the second time of the game into the upper tank. And the Yankees will take an 8-5 to five lead. And O'Neill now has hit four home runs in the last two days. Two last night and two in this game. And we're just in the fourth inning. This is what uh, Dave Steve used to have was that biting slider that would get down and in and just and roast your knuckles. And he kind of hung that pitch, and we'll see it coming up on the replay. Boy, Paul O'Neill hit that in the upper deck. Whew. 
So Paul now with three RBIs, two home runs, and three base hits. Breaking ball swung out and missed. Let's take another look at it. Can we hear the sound on this one? But that ball didn't have any downward uh, bite to it. That was just kind of a flat slider on the inside part of the plate, and that's where hangers are deposited. Uh, yeah. that, that's the bank depository up there. It just made a deposit. Remember I said earlier in the game that uh, these left-handed hitters, O'Neill Martinez, they like the ball out on the plate. They're not like the traditional left-handed hitter, hitters here at Yankee Stadium. I take that back on that pitch. <laughs> they like it low and in. <laughs> I take it back. I didn't say it, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that's the sound again. O'Neill loves to play the drums, and so he knows what the sound is when he hits the right beat on that drum. Kind of like when you're knocking on the door of Julio's head. <laughs> That'll be pulled foul off to the right side. Hey, while we got some time, I want to wish uh, Jerry Cassell a happy birthday. Jerry Cassell used to pitch uh, for the Boston Red Sox and also the uh, Detroit Tigers. Has a restaurant here in New York City at Pino's Restaurant on 34th Street. He also gave up the 24th home run to Roger Maris back in 1961. What's well, Jerry about uh, 72 now? <laughs> you mean inches around? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I tell you what, he's got a fabulous restaurant. Great guy. Eric Cassell at Pino's Restaurant. Roger Maris. I'll tell you what, you can say what you want, but Bart McGuire bested Roger with 62, but for the first time, everything that was said about Roger Maris during this home run chase was all positive. Yes. And the family was there. It was just a, a fabulous event. It's one of those memorable events that you will remember for the rest of your life. It wasn't all positive when Roger hit 61 back in 1961. Back up the middle off the glove of Steve. Almost took his head off. And quickly recovering it is Gonzalez to throw out Bertie. So one gone. That ball goes 1-6-3, and you see Dave Steve seeing if uh, his glove's still intact. Watch this ball. That's hunting the, that's hunting the hat, the head. Boy, and Steve ducks that and throws his hand up. He was fortunate that he fended the ball off and de deflected it to the shortstop. If he doesn't get his hand up there, Bobby, that, that, that's got him right in the coconut. Yeah. Right in the head. That's the nightmare ball that goes back up the middle. That all pitchers dream about. <laughs> and it's a bad dream. Yeah, that's that's one of the, that's one of the reasons the old left-hander left the game right there. Too many of those came back and you couldn't defend yourself. Well hit in the center field and moving back is Cruz to make the catch. It is two gone for New York. Do you remember Jerry Cassell? Were you pitching uh, when Jerry was pitching back in the uh, 60s? Yes, I remember the name. Yes, I do. Yeah, big guy, you know, and I think he threw the ball pretty hard. Well, Boston had a bunch of those guys back in that era. Raditz. Yeah, but he talks about Dick Raditz a lot. Yep. And of course, Jerry Cassell was from Brooklyn, New York. I'll tell you what, they can cook up some pretty good Italian food down at Pino's, though. As Daryl Strawberry steps in, Daryl is one for two. Dave Steve is throwing two nasty pitches at Daryl Strawberry. Backdoor slider one, backdoor slider two. See if he goes away with a fastball here to make try to make Daryl bite or come inside. Whoa. Daryl got underneath it, and it is a towering fly ball in the infield with some tremendous hang time, but Gonzalez finally comes up with it. Paul O'Neill with his second home run of the Yankees lead at 8-5. Boy, the Yankee fans are happy. Yankees lead at 8-5 over Toronto here in the fifth inning, but come on down to the stadium and cheer on the 1998 American League Eastern champions as they continue their series against the Blue Jays tomorrow. At 7.30, and then Saturday, September the 12th at 4 o'clock, and then finally Sunday, the uh, series will end. 
at 130. Jose Canseco leads it off for Toronto here in the fifth inning. He had a towering uh, three run shot back in the second when Toronto scored five. David Wells having a good time and a great year to go along with it. You think David Wells had a good time last night throwing that champagne and stuff around in the clubhouse? <laughs> you know, I loved his quote. He said, I'm so glad we we clinched it up at Fenway in this clubhouse. Now they'll have to live with the stench the rest of the year on that champagne shower that they gave the clubhouse. He said, we didn't have to smell our clubhouse up with that champagne. <laughs> he said, we did it in the perfect spot. And he's right. <laughs> but that stuff lingers for a long time. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody knew it was going to happen. And they become the uh, fastest team to clinch the American League divisional title since they started divisional play in 1969. 3-1 now to Conseco. I was talking about the rest of this, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays series. On Saturday the 12th all fans will receive a pair of Yankee sunglasses compliments of Bell Atlantic Mobile and we can certainly use some sunglasses here I've lost mine so I'll be here Saturday and I'll be looking for my sunglasses you come on down and pick up a pair of sunglasses too and Conseco is going to ground out the Jeter. Pettit is starting to throw the ball to the outside part of the play, starting to use that good fastball away. And that's the way I remember Andy Pettit pitching in the minor leagues and even up here in um, earlier in the UC. Look at that shaking, big boomer shaking his head. Almost got it, Jose. Almost got it. Every DH always goes back after they make an out or get a hit and they like to talk about it tell everybody up and down that bench how they did it or how they didn't do it or how they just missed it as Delgado swings through one. Of course that's all the designated hitter has to do once he makes the out. What else is he going to do. He's got to have somebody he can talk to. Because he's got to abide his time until the next at bat. I don't know who Jose is talking to there. It doesn't sound, doesn't look like anybody's listening to it. That's <laughs> Greyback. Uh, oh, is it, yeah, he finally acknowledged him. <laughs> I think Jose is saying, you know, I got the same pitch as I hit the three run home run. Whoa, what? Look at that. You talk about somebody getting around on a fastball inside. Delgado. Pulls a liner right over the Yankee dugout into the stands. Wow, boy, is that dangerous. Kind of tells you Delgado uh, doesn't want to get jammed inside. Now you've got, uh, you throw that ball fastball in there and he hits it that far foul. Now you can go on the outside part of the plate either with your fastball or breaking ball. Delgado, the new team captain for the Blue Jays. Now, now, TJ, when you give up the longest home run in Skydome history to a guy, you remember that, don't you? Absolutely. That's the breaking ball on 2 2, and Delgado will foul it out of play. What an adjustment he has made, though. A couple of years ago, uh, he was being platooned. And now here he is. He's an everyday player, and there's no more platoon for him. Kind of like Paul O'Neill, you know, when Paul was with Cincinnati, he couldn't play against left-handed pitching. <laughs> yeah. No, he wasn't allowed to play well, against left-handed pitching. That's a better word. You're right about that. And that's down low ball, three, three, and two. Delgado came up with that big spread in Sports Illustrated, and they were talking about him a possible rookie of the year, and did all these things in minor league baseball. You know, the longest walk in baseball is from AAA up here. And it's one thing to do well in AAA ball, 
but you've got to maintain it because the pitchers that are getting you out in triple-A ball, Bobby, are the pitchers that were going to be making the jump up to the big leagues. Well, the Yankees are displaying all of their talent in the minor leagues, and they've got some darn good talent. That'll be pulled out of play, too. So the Yankees uh, are able to show what they have down on the farm and are looking to break into this Yankee lineup. Shane Spencer is one of those, and he uh, brings some well-needed uh, right-handed power along with Ricky Lede that's playing here tonight. <laughs> Mike Law, the uh, third baseman, is up here, and that's down low and outside, ball four, so a one-out walk to Delgado. The Yankee Farm Clubs, uh, Bobby, uh, that that's their their farm system is is really churning out the talent now. I mean, you're talking about Mike Lowell. Mike Lowell was uh, the one that was in that um, uh, Randy Johnson. And while we have time, we like to congratulate Tampa of the A uh, League down in Florida. They defeated Port Charlotte to sweep the uh, best of three semifinal series. Greensboro Bats lost to Columbia uh, in the best of three championship series. It's tied one to one and Oneonta in the short A league. They were awarded the championship after three consecutive rainouts. So there are three championship teams that the Yankees have in their minor league system. And these guys are going to filter on up through. We want to say hats off. Congratulations to those minor league teams. And you're already seeing the uh, product of the Yankees minor league along with Bernie Williams, and Derek Jeter, and Girardi now will go out to talk to uh, Pettit as he's run the count to 2-0 and on Jose Cruz Jr. But Bobby, you, you've been around here long enough that how many times have you seen, though, the Yankees have good teams in the minor leagues and the guys never get up here because they were traded off for veteran ball players. But now they're coming up through the system. And what that tells these young kids that are out there being drafted, hey, if I sign with the Yankees, I've got a chance to get through that system and get up and play for a championship ball club. That's down low, ball 3-3-0. Three, three oh. So Pettit is working himself into a possible jam here in the fifth inning with a three-run lead. Ball four, so back-to-back -back walks Toronto now with a couple of men on that'll bring up Tony Fernandez and that'll also bring out Mel Stylemeyer and Mel's got to be telling him one thing hey look you've got an eight to five lead you're pitching into a good groove and don't be too fine you've, you've got good stuff don't be picky 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 and when you when you try to nip 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 nibble 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 all of a sudden the, the count is in the batter's favor and then you're up the creek without a paddle. That's Darren Holmes. And he may be uh, getting loose. And Case Pettit can't work his way out of this jam. Pettit with three strike counts, but it's back-to-back -back walks here in the fifth inning. His uh, bad inning was the second when he gave up five to Toronto. Fernandez will bounce the brooches. Could be a double play. He steps on the back, throws back to Martinez, and it is a double play. So whatever Stolomar told him, he turned it into a double play, and the Yankees lead it eight to five. Who's that? Looks like he's running for president. Uh, no, 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 I looked like hail to the chief right there. Yeah. Looked like Tom Cruise or something, didn't it? Straight. Uh, looked like he boy, just came oh down here from New Haven, right out of Yale. We need to get another good look at that guy. While Ricky Lede steps in here at the bottom of the fifth inning, he is two for two and having a fine night. A single and a double, two runs scored, and a run batted in. And while the day steps in, I want to wish uh, Greg Dobbs a speedy recovery from open heart surgery at New York uh, Medical Center. 
as will be popped up into center field. Can of corn for Cruz, and there's one gone. Ricky Lede hits just a little easy fly ball, but you see him hustling down there. Maybe he thinks deja vu. Maybe he thinks Jose Cruz Jr. might blotch up another one. Good hustle. Not this time, but you're right. Good hustle as Brocious steps in. Brocious, a base hit, a sacrifice fly, and an RBI. And strike one to Brocious. Eighty five eighty six RBI's now for Brocious hitting in the seventh eighth and ninth slot. That's a one hopper to Graybeck and two gone for New York here in the fifth. Well let's take a look at the Toyota box score and there's a lot to it for the Yankees that uh, adds up to be 11 hits. And O'Neill is three for three with two home runs and three RBIs. Lede is two for three. Now block two for two. And the Yankees lead it eight to five with 11 base hits. Dave Steve's been making some good pitches since he threw that hanger to Paul O'Neill, and they've mainly been on that slider. Did, uh, Steve when he broke into pitching was an outfielder and, and was a pretty good athlete and had a and such a good arm they found out that he didn't hit the ball quite as well as they had hoped so they brought him into the mound strapped the toe plate on him and the rest is history actually Steve picked up a save in his last outing against Boston he pitched a couple of innings against the Red Sox Toronto swept the Red Sox at Fenway right before the Yankees came to town. And Toronto in New York for this four game series before they head off to Cleveland and then Detroit. Upcoming starters uh, tomorrow we mentioned uh, Hideki Arabu will face off against Clemens. And then Saturday. David Cohn will try to win number 20 as he leads the American League and wins. Oh, what a job he did up in Boston. That's high and tight. Did he face one over the minimum in his seven innings? Faced 22 hitters. Struck out 11. That is indeed a positive sign for the Yankees. This is trouble down the right field corner. Girardi around first, he'll hit for second, and he'll make it. A two-out double for Joe Girardi. And Girardi is two for three. Now the professor went to school on Dave Steve. Those guys from Northwestern, uh, they don't go to that school uh, just to hang around the bookstore. Joe Girardi got a high-hanging slider. And you see why uh, Joe Torrey likes to hit and run with him because he's got that stroke down hitting the ball to right field. Last time he hit a slider and hit it to left field and got it over uh, Jose Cruz Jr's head. Uh, you mentioned Northwestern uh, Joe Girardi last time we were in Chicago which was last weekend he got a chance to go see that Northwestern football game that's over the head of not <laughs> <laughs> So he got a chance to go uh, watch him. Uh, in their debut here 1998 and got a chance to watch at least the first half and Northwestern won their first game. They scored 40 some points but they've got a big game coming up this weekend against the Dukies. Joe took a lot of credit for that too. I'm sure. Down low for a ball. Knobloch had been plunked 17 times by opposing pitchers. That's uh, obviously tops in the American League. We'll never guess who's second. Pass down low, ball three. Give me a clue. Uh, he's a catcher. Pudge Rodriguez. And his initials, no, is SF.
Sal Fasano. Sal Fasano? Yeah. I knew you wanted to know. Sal Fasano? Yeah, he's been hit uh, 16 times. On deck is Jeter. High and tight, ball four. The Yankees will have a couple of men on for Jeter. Dave, Steve, the arm angle's starting to drop a little bit. You seem a little upset with himself. He used to have a funny motion. I, I don't see it as much now as he did uh, when he was younger. He used to throw across his body quite a bit, and then he would spin on his heel to open up his front side. And, and then he would kind of throw that slider kind of crossfire at you and really made it tough from the right side uh, you, to stay in on it. And then you, you saw right there, he, he could run that fastball up and in on right-handers. Well, the tough part about uh, Dave Steve is that he short arms the ball. And so you don't get a good chance to look at it. You don't get a good pickup from it uh, from the batter's box. Dieter is uh, already 0 for 3 in this game, and this is his fourth time to come to uh, the plate. Yeah, you were talking about Steve spinning off on his heel. That's uh, that's what drives uh, Mike Stanton crazy. <laughs> is when he spins off his heel too much. That's a high ball. One, one, and one. See Dave looking into the uh, bench. Now watch him. has has good motion, good leg kick, but. You see his front foot when it plants before he would really step across his body and to get his front side open he had to open up that front foot. That's a check swing uh, foul off to the right side. Did that catch our cameraman? That glanced off of one of our camera guys down in the uh, well. Now it's one and two. G Genovese. Got the big G on up on his hat there. <laughs> Take one for the WB11, Mr. G. Another pitch foul back and out of play. Steve's having a hard time controlling the fastball inside, and he's getting underneath it. And the ball's going up and in, and he wants to get on top of it and drive it down and in to get the ball sinking more. That's just a flat tail. Try to throw a slider away here. So Dave Steve struggling as Steve Sinclair begins to warm up now for Toronto. About two innings is all Johnson. Will allow Steve to pitch as he swings and misses at that breaking ball. So the Yankees will leave a couple of men on in 8 5 New York. Here. Santiago is two for two. Joe Torrey and Mel Stottlemyre would like to see Andy have a real nice inning right here and give him six innings of work. And if he does that, I think they will probably go to the bullpen and let uh, Darren Holmes and Jeff Nelson and everybody else take part in the in in the ball game. But Andy has pitched better the last couple innings than he has in that uh, first. On the ground to Jeter. One gone. Well, let's take a look at the American League East champions uh, starting back in 1976. They won the World Series 76, 77, and 78. I mean, they weren't the World Series champions in 76, 77, 78. 77, since Cincinnati yeah. won the uh, series. They wanted to be the world champions in 76, so. You know, right back uh, takes a call strike. In that 1980 season was the year that the Yankees won 103 ball games and then ended up losing three straight to Kansas City. 
There's a good off-speed pitch swung on and missed. That was the changeup that he's been throwing about 54, 55, 56 feet. That right there was easy. He's just working his way up. And that was a good one. Yes, it was. Good arm speed, no ball speed, and Graybeck was way out in front. Yeah, Graybeck now 0-2 at the count. Another one swung on and missed. Strike three. Back-to-back changeups and two beauties as he strikes out Grayback. This was good because Andy Pettit threw a good changeup, backed it up with a good changeup. Hitters will never look for the same pitch like that, uh, especially a changeup followed by a changeup. Maybe a, maybe a fastball followed by a fastball. Two gone and Gonzalez, who struck out six times last night, tied a major league record. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Pettit's had one easy inning through this six, and that came in the fourth when the Jays went down 1, 2, 3. He possibly could have another one. This is well hit in the center field, and Bernie will run it down. So good speed by Williams in center, and it's a one, two, three inning for Andy Pettit. Eight, five, New York. Well, back at the stadium on a beautiful night for baseball. New York leads at eight, five over Toronto, and Toronto now in with their third pitcher of the game. Steve Sinclair will come in, but let's take a look. And a guy that will be leading off in this inning. His name is Paul O'Neill. And let's go all the way back to the first inning. Yes, a high hanger. And it becomes Yankees two and Toronto nothing. Now in the fourth inning. Yes, upper tank. Second home run for Paul O'Neill. His second of the game. And now O'Neill with 23 home runs. And 109 runs batted in. Well, he hit the ball so well, the Timmy Johnson uh, is going to bring in a left-hander, Steve Sinclair, to face it. The Blue Jays only have a couple of left-handers in their bullpen along with Sinclair as Plesak. Well, they Plesak is the guy that uh, they go to when the game's on the line. But they want to give this youngster uh, a chance to pitch, and you're, you're down 8-5. to five. And the best way to do it is throw him into the fire. Steel only gets hardened when it's heated. Breaking ball swung out and missed now at uh, one and two on O'Neill. You see Paul, Paul talking. He, he's not talking to himself. He's asking Richie Garcia, was that a strike? And Richie motion, yes, it is. Paul just wanted to make sure that he was not swinging at a bad pitch. I never liked that because. You think that, that, that they I, would tell you? I think they always say, yeah, that would have been a strike just to make you feel good. Boy, he blows the fastball by him up and in. So, as O'Neill strikes out here in the sixth, that ball got on him in a hurry. Yes, it did. That was a good fastball up and in. And he turns around and asks Richie the same thing. Was it a strike? That was no, it wasn't. But that was a good pitcher's pitch. Sinclair with Syracuse last year. Now Nelson gets up for the Yankees. Nelson and Joe Torrey tries to work him back into good shape at the end of the year to get him ready for the playoffs. Bernie Williams finds the first pitch back and out of play. Bernie 0 for 3 tonight. Jeter 0 for 4 already. up high. Well, the one thing, this is one of the reasons that 
Uh, I think Joe Torre said if if you had to give somebody an edge in this batting race probably would give it to Bernie because of his switch hitting abilities. He said take it from me it's a lot easier to have that ball breaking into you than away from you. <laughs> I don't have to take it from him I know <laughs> and you're right boy I'll tell you what to have the advantage to turn around and hit right handed when there's a left hander out there or Jeter uh, nothing but a right handed hitter. He could be 0 for 4 but you couldn't tell it. He loves to play baseball and he has a lot of fun doing it. If you go down the street Bobby and 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 watch little kids play ball. The kids are out there eight nine ten years old that they're out there playing they're having fun. You're at this level it's a job but it's still the game that you played when you were eight nine ten years old and you have fun. A lot of guys waiting to be called upon on both benches just in case uh, Johnson or Torrey needs them. A uh, one out walk to uh, Williams that'll bring up Tino Martinez. Yankees lead at eight to five. For some reason or another, uh, Sinclair has lost the strike zone. Yankees looking to win their 103rd game of the year against 41 losses. There's the breaking ball in for a call strike. The Yankees have been in first place 141 consecutive days. That's coming into this game. At uh, that's pretty good uh, domination I would say. That's the breaking ball. Now it's two and one. Sinclair was the 74th overall selection. That is hit hard. Delgado knocks it down. He'll go to force the runner at second and does it. Oh, well, Bernie is gone, and there's two outs here in the sixth. Watch how hard this ball's hit. Delgado's in perfect fielding position. The ball got down on it, handcuffed him, and made a good play to get the lead runner in Bernie Williams. And the reason that play was tough, he's throwing the ball right over Bernie's shoulder. And Gonzalez, the shortstop, has really got to be concentrating on the ball because it can come out of that uh, runner and all of a sudden it's on you. Well, we've got a pinch hitter now for Strawberry. Uh, Chili Davis comes in and Chili is batting only from the right side for New York at this present time as he continues to try to heal that other side that got some full muscle in it so he's not able to bat from the left side but he swings a pretty potent bat from the right side so strawberry and him kind of alternating back and forth. Chili with a couple of home runs and seven RBI. And like Santiago for the Blue Jays Chili on the disabled list almost all of 1998. But he's getting back to the team at the right time. Just give you one more bullet in your gun. No, That's what it, it does. Ever. That'll be out of play as uh, the Yankee fans try to wave here at the stadium. And while they're doing that, I want to wish. A happy 46th anniversary to Lynn and Lorraine Chalizzi. 46 wonderful years. Mom and pop of Anthony Chalizzi. Swing and a miss, strike three. Sinclair strikes out a couple of men here in the sixth. The Yankees leave a man on. 8-5 New York. Big, 
Jeff Nelson. Boy, what a what a relief, and no pun intended right here to get this big guy back. It's only his 38th game, but the the big thing Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre want is how do you come back from pitching one, two, three days in a row? Will your back stiffen up? And what they've seen so far, they're very, very, very happy with Nelson and Holmes return. Well, it's time to get Nelson in shape. And Nelson missed uh, 65 days already this year. So he's making his third appearance after returning from the disabled list. And he will face the top of the order. Shannon Stewart, Sean Green, and Jose Canseco. A big missing piece of the puzzle for Joe Torre in that bullpen as Nelson and Stanton used to work them over and then turn it over to Rivera. Now he wants to get back into that same, you know, uh, one, two, three punts that he has, make sure they're all healthy and that Nelson is uh, stable and will be ready for the playoffs. Is that a call strike? I guess it was. Going two now to Stewart. And to take a look at the box score for Toronto. They have five runs on seven base hits. And Stewart is one for two. Nelly is extremely hard to pick up from the right side as he comes by the way of third base. And the big Aussie gets up Graham Lloyd. Another big part of the pitcher for the Yankees in the bullpen. And just missing outside on that one now it's two and two. That was good pitch good location the only problem that didn't get the good call. That was a locker. They locked the batter up right there. Slider, 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 and then you lock him up with the fastball. And the breaking ball foul back and out of play. Well, those old herniated discs, you know, those things to, can be so painful. And anytime you've had any problems with your back or pain in your back, it just affects the whole body. You just can't move. And the Yankee uh, doctors and trainers have done an excellent job rehabbing Jeff Nelson along with him and hard work to get his self back to this position. And the breaking ball is on the outside corner strike three. So Stewart is gone. And like you said Bobby he's so hard to pick up. He's big. He pitches from the third base side of the rubber. And dropping down that was just a breaking ball that started on the inside corner and stayed on the plate all the way. Well, what do you do? I mean, you're bailing out and the ball's going away from you. How do you hit it? The only way you hit Jeff Nelson is if he makes a mistake and hangs something on the inside part and that, that hits you right in the bail. Well, Sean Green will step in. He's two for three. Well, really, the only way you can hit Nelson from the right side is that you take a couple of big guy wires up there with you <laughs> and you and you attach them to both of your feet. And you nail them down so that you can't bail out and you can hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> and take your chances that way. <laughs> you, you're going to laugh at this one. That one will not be laughed at by Sean Green. If uh, memory serves me correct, Sean Green was hit up in Toronto by Mike Buddy. And that's when Tony Phillips went ballistic. And that was no, there was nothing wrong with that. That was just a fastball that... Uh, looked like that, that was actually a slider. I saw a little black dot on it. But I had a son, Travis, that had a tough time keeping that front leg in. So I put cuff weights on his leg. I put 20 pounds of cuff weights so he couldn't pick his leg up. And where he was, that's where that front leg had to be. And we, we just took batting practice so that he could learn to stay in to keep his front side in. And it worked until I took the weights off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what Canseco does. Canseco, a one for three with a three-run home run, is 42nd of the year. 
<laughs> his only problem, he had to hit the ball out of the ballpark so he could uncuff his weights and then trot around the bases. I think they call that abuse, don't they? <laughs> Holy cow. Now this uh, this should be a pretty good matchup here. Conseco, the big strong hitter against Nelson, the big strong right-hander. Conseco choked up on his bat the last time. It looks like he's got it choked up a little bit this time too. And and, and the time that you start thinking that he's going to throw the breaking ball, <laughs> you throw the fastball, by the one that you wanted to swing at. And that that's nasty. That that yeah. might have been just a just a shade low, but still, that's uh, the, the ball's got good bite, good sinking. Now you're ready for the slider away. Nope, fastball in. And it's uh, way in for a ball, it's two and one. But what Joe Torrey wants to do with Nelson, he wants to test him on getting him in a couple of consecutive games. So he's got him in here tonight. Probably pitched the three batters, and if he can get him back in tomorrow and see how he reacts and how he does then, then, then he'll have a good idea on the physical condition of Jess Nelson. Well, the count has gone to three and one on Conseco. but foul and it took about uh, 25 people with it well that ball ricocheted off about 25 gourds down the left field line three one fastball you throw the you throw the fastball inside and this is what happens the air on the fan there with the glove jumped just didn't quite jump high enough he must have had those leg weights on of mine uh, it's a 3-2 count with one out to Conseco. <laughs> the runner will take off, and the pitch is swung on and throw down his second out of time. But Conseco strikes out for the second time. And there's two gone. And that's going to bring Joe Torrey out. Carlos Delgado, the left-handed bat, is coming up. He's got Graham Lloyd up in the bullpen. And this is what he has been doing all year long. This is what Torrey likes to do. That's what Jeff Nelson likes to do, striking out big right-handed hitters. So the move has been made, and the left-hander will come in to pitch to Delgado. Good job again by Nelson. Yankees lead at 8-5. A bit out here, eight to five. Nelson tipping the cap to the crowd, and another good job by him. And a couple of slaps on the neck by David Wells. <laughs> Wells, see that Wells, yeah. Wells knows how to tip the cap to the crowd. Of course, Wells had a perfect game, and he's trying to show Nelson, look, that was a pretty weak tip of the cap to this great crowd here at Yankee Stadium. If I'm not uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but he he waved Wells, but Boomer waved it like the babe used to, you know, yeah. wave that cap up there like that. Well, when your idol is the babe, you've got to emulate him as well as you can. You know, whenever you talk about Babe Ruth, I think of John Goodman in, in, the, yeah. in the show. <laughs> right now, Lloyd has to worry about Delgado. Lloyd's specialty is to get out left-handed hitters. Look at that, 41 games and 33 and a third innings. That tells you about an out a game or That's thereabouts. That's a specialty guy. <laughs> That's a specialty guy. <laughs> and this is hit hard into right field, and O'Neill will move over to make the catch. Delgado does not make it easy out, but Toronto has gone 8-5 New York. Yankee fans are happy here in the bottom of the seventh. I went to New York State at the Shelburne Murray Hill. 
as Tino leads it off or check that uh, Ricky Ricky Lede leads it off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Good night for Lede. He is two for three. And that ball fell right off the helmet of uh, Santiago. <laughs> they hit him right on the top of the of the helmet. It's a good thing he had a helmet on. You can remember when the catchers didn't wear the helmets, right? They just yeah. just had the regular cloth hat. Boy, that's got to shake you up a bit. Got in on a hand, so he pops it up to Fernandez at third. One gone. Well, we're in the American League, so we're going to make a pitching change. Sinclair is gone with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. We'll be back right after this. Yankee fans try to pick up that American League East champion. Souvenir. Another pitching change. Carlos Almanzar comes in to pitch. Carlos Almanzar was called uh, up uh, the 17th of August from their Syracuse ball club. He was three and six down there with 10 saves, a 231 ERA come up here. He's one and two with a 643 ERA in 18 games and 21 innings. Good live fastball. Good arm on this young man from the Dominican Republic. And the batter is Brocious. Brocious one for two tonight. It two for three. A one out base hit by Brocious. Well, this has been a dream season for Scott Brocious, and he has done everything to turn his year around and also his baseball career around after coming over from Oakland. Terrible year for him last year. And he's hitting coming into this game, 294. He's got a couple of hits tonight, so he's on his way to 300 with 17 home runs and 85. 86 RBIs. And he's got a division championship already underneath his belt. Joe Girardi will step in. Joe is two for three. Two double. This could be two. Gonzalez, gray back for one. Back to Delgado. 6-4-3 double play, and the Yankees are gone here in the seventh. We played seven here at the stadium, and the Yankees lead it by three. This copyrighted telecast is authorized under rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publications, reproductions, retransmissions, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Yankees and WPIX is prohibited. Well, T.J., the Yankee fans really relaxing here at the stadium with this three-game, uh, three-run lead. And we've got another pitching change for New York. Well, another one of the guys with the bad back on the disabled list gets a chance to come in tonight. 18 games. 21 innings. You know what? The Yankees have come up with something uh, a little bit different here at Yankee Stadium. We talked about the batting circles. Well, we've got the batting squares now. I think when the Yankees went off, now correct me if I'm wrong, I think when the Yankees went off on their last road trip, those things were round. And when we come back this time, they're square. Did so, we have a lot of rain here? Did it have rain and bad weather? Would no. that have blown so much that it might have blown him into a square? Negative. Okay. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Watch out. Watch out, Shane. El Duke has got gloves on. You know, really, yeah. when you're from Cuba, this is uh, this is pretty cold weather for Darn you. Right. Uh-oh. A little feisty down there right now. <laughs> Yankees are really enjoying this year, obviously. And Darren Holmes working his way back off the disabled list. Jose Cruz Jr. leads it off here in the eighth. <laughs> Chad Curtis, the one uh, squaring off. Pardon the pun, squaring off. 
with El Duque on the batting squares. I like him. Who says that you, you have to have circles? Well, no, I didn't say you had to have circles. I just said that's, uh, I, I've never seen it before. Do you remember in Yankee Stadium, Bobby? Doesn't mean when, it's bad. Do you remember in Yankee Stadium when the warm-up mounds used to be in back of home plate and the pitchers used to throw towards uh, the, the screen? Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes to uh, Jose Cruz. Right there, the warm-up mounds before the game, instead of throwing in the bullpen, the starting pitchers used to throw right there, right back towards home plate. Use your telestrator there. I am. I'm pointing, and I'm, uh, I'm doing it, and it just doesn't show up. Good pitch by Holmes, striking out Cruz. But good start for Darren Holmes. One gone here in the eighth. You, since Darren Holmes has come back from the disabled list, he has thrown the ball, Bobby, much better, much better location. And, and his breaking ball is sharper. Look at that. Locked him up inside. Good pitch. Jose Cruz Jr. doesn't like it. He got called on a uh, Andy uh, Pettit slider inside. Got called on a comeback fastball. Well, he made his first appearance after coming off the disabled list last Saturday against Chicago. And Tony Fernandez takes the call strike. One thing that Darren Holmes has done since he's come back, he, he comes back throwing strikes. I mean, first pitch strikes. I mean, he's right in there challenging that hitter. I think what happened earlier in the season, he, he, he just got off to a, a rocky start and just never recovered. And I know I, 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 I talked to Don Baylor about him, and Baylor said, this kid's got good stuff, throws strikes, and you didn't see that at the first part of the season. Let me ask you something. You know, Holmes coming over here wanting to do such a great job. Could his back have been hurting him in the first part of the year and he didn't tell anybody? It could very well have been. And, and he'd been pitching pitch under uh, strain and, and trying to pitch through it, uh, figuring, hey, you know, I, I've, I've got to prove something to these guys. Could very well have happened. Because as we know, a, a pitcher, if, if there's something wrong, right when you get ready to throw the ball, you will know that it's going to grab or there's going to be pain there. Consequently, you, you don't have the good stuff. Popped up down the left field line. It'll be back in the stand. That, that, that's the pitch I've been impressed with. Boy, yeah. he, he's got a good fighting curveball. Man, that thing goes 12 to 6. And he's got uh, Fernandez, one ball and two strikes and one out here in the eighth. He might be a candidate for that fastball starting off the plate inside and then coming back over like he threw Cruz. Well, it's the heat inside and it's a little bit too far for a ball. Now it's two and two. Now you can follow that pitch, Bobby. That that, that was a, a fastball that kind of moved inside. You can follow that right back again with that comeback on the inside and that'll lock him up. Out of play. Fernandez on 11 game hitting streak. Batting 313 now. With the Blue Jays for many, many years. Traded away. Now he is back. Got him out in front and he lifts it up into right field. Two gone. So Holmes has retired the first two men here in the eighth. That'll bring up Benito Santiago. Santiago two for three with a run scored. Working his way back off the disabled list. And another strike thrown by Darren Holmes. I tell you what. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have something wrong with his back in the first part of the year that affected his pitching. Either that or the layoff because of the back. 
gave him a chance to uh, think about what he was doing wrong and to correct it as he worked his way back on rehab. Well, whatever it is, this is a totally different uh, person on the mound. And I'm sure Joe and Mel are. This is, the guy, this is the guy that they thought they were getting. That's exactly that right. They, that they didn't show up in the first part of the year. He breaks the uh, hand out of his glove, and that's just a little timing mechanism so that you don't rush. And he throws and gets, you, you can see why his back hurts. He gets a big follow through. That'll be out of play. And that will be back in the play now. Fans are booing the person that dropped that fly ball. It bounces all the way back in to the playing field. And the ball boy picks it up. I'm going to give you play-by-play -play on it because I know you're interested. Ball boy takes it back over to the stands and gives it to a fan. He strikes him out with a good breaking ball on the outside corner. Holmes comes in, strikes out two or three here to the Yankees. Lead it eight to five. Well, let's take a look at the game summary brought to you by Jeep, the most awarded winning brand of four by fours on earth. And the game summary looks like this. There's a lot to it, especially in the first part of this game. Toronto, second inning, five runs on five hits, highlighted by the Conseco home run. Then O'Neill comes back in the first, but a two-run shot himself. Second uh, inning again, Lede singled and scored on a knob block single. New York third, four runs on five hits. O'Neill comes back with his second home run in the fourth inning. A solo shot into the upper deck. And Darren Holmes comes in to pitch the eighth inning. Striking out two or three, so he is on his way back. And I know Joe Torrey and Stalemire are happy to have Nelson and Holmes back and pitching very well. As we said, Bobby, earlier, the playoffs is all about pitching. And if you've got one more quality arm out there, it just gives you, boy, it gives you more ammunition that you can go. You know, plus you'll have a starter out there, obviously. Now block two for two. He has walked twice. Well, that's a pretty nasty pitch right there. <laughs> that looks like a Pedro Bourbon type delivery, doesn't it? <laughs> this guy came into a game one time down in Charlotte and threw 11 pitches and struck out the side. He was just throwing that fastball away and then throwing that hard split finger. You're right. He, he, he reminds you a lot of Pedro Bourbon. Senior. One of two count on Knobloch. Up high, ball two, two, and two. The Yankees have banged out 13 base hits, for which Knobloch has two of the 13. play the Yankees looking to win their 103rd game I like to quote that Joe Torrey said the closest I ever came to 100 was 99 <laughs> losses with the Mets in 1979 <laughs> I saw that that was a great one <laughs> that's a chopper to Gonzalez and there's one gone well, Joe, you don't have to worry about it anymore because you've got 100 on the right side this time. <laughs> you've got 103 possibly tonight. It's been a great run for Joe here in New York. And the Yankees uh, continue to warm up their pitchers. That's Mike Buddy, the right-hander, and of course, Stanton, the left-hander. I've been impressed with Almond's are and his control and the movement on his baseball and how hard he throws it. Look at that. Jeter is 0 for 4 and he has struck out twice. 
every day there's something different in baseball. Last night he was the hero with a couple of home runs as the Yankees clinched, and tonight it hasn't been a good night. High and fairly deep into right field, but not deep enough. And Derek Jeter is 0 for 5. But that's going to bring up Paul O'Neill as Jeter goes back to ponder what happened tonight. And that brings out Tim Johnson, and uh, Timmy makes the call to the bullpen for the left-hander, Dan Plesak, the ex-Milwaukee Brewer. Well, another pitching change here at the stadium. We'll be back right after this. Well, it makes no different if, difference if Derek Jeter is 0 for 5. She still loves Derek Jeter. Well, let's check the upcoming telecast brought to you by Ford. Expect more, get more, let your tri-state Ford store show you why there's more to a Ford. And tomorrow, as the Blue Jays continue this four-game series, MSG will take over. Is that an 8.30 start or a 7.30 start? So it's a 7.30 start. And Saturday, we'll be back right here on the WB11 at 4 o'clock. And then Sunday... We'll conclude this four-game series at 1.30 right here on the WB11. And the Red Sox come to town Monday and Tuesday, both on MSG. And another pitching change, Mr. TJ. What a job Big Dan Plesak has done. It was once the closer for the Brewers, and now he comes in. He's the Graham Lloyd, Mike Stanton, uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays. Gets the left-handers out. And that's what Mel Queen and Tim Johnson has him for. And, and, and they said he has done just an outstanding job this year in the role that they have him in. Well, he was used primarily as a setup man in 1997, but he's here to get O'Neill out with a couple of men gone already here at the bottom of the eighth inning. And O'Neill is swinging a hot bat. He's three for four with two home runs. Now he's got back to back two run home run games. And did he check his swing? Nope. He went around a little bit too far, said Hirschbeck down at third. So Plesak in front over two. I think you'll see here that Paul does uh, get the bat out just a little too far. And that's right down Broadway, striking out O'Neill. So the Yankees are gone one, two, three with a couple of pitching changes here in the eighth, but they lead it eight five over Toronto. And as Tommy and I know, the right relationship is everything. As the Blue Jays come to bat here in the ninth inning, Grayback will lead it off. Yankees have the three run lead. And Holmes is in for his second inning. That pitch up high a bit. Holmes came in in the eighth, struck out two or three there. So Joe extending him out just a little bit. Because Bobby if he's going to pitch he, he's going to pitch probably earlier in the game and, and is going to get a couple innings in and if you want to stretch him out and see exactly how he goes especially tonight it's a little cool see how the back reacts to this cool damp night. On the ground right side. Martinez up with it and it's a nice lead as home is there to cover one gone. That was a very nice lead by Tino Martinez. Too many first basemen throw the ball right at the bag. Tino threw the ball before the bag and let Holmes catch it and then continue the run to first base and uh, tag first base without having to catch it and tag it all at once. Tino's wearing that clean look tonight isn't he. Yes he is. Alex Gonzalez. Gonzalez 0 for 3. Now well, Gonzalez thought maybe he would take advantage of Brocious. Brocious was a little bit back of the bag at third, but he only get one shot at that. That will alert everybody. There's Brocious now. He's moved in a bit. 
And that will be fouled off to the right side out of play. Now it's one and one. And it's also a broken bat. Well, if he's going to try to bunt, he can bunt with the broken bat. Would deaden the ball more. The crowd tonight, 25,881. towards first this time. That's Riley, he said. Gonzalez did not go around. The appeal denied, and it's a two ball and a strike. Count to Gonzalez. That's off the end of the bat into center field. It will fall in front of Williams for a base hit. One out base hit here in the ninth inning. And Shannon Stewart will come to the plate fastball away and got it off the end of his bat and didn't hit it hard but just hit it out there in front of Bernie and, and wisely with a three run lead Bernie isn't going to do anything to let the runner go over to second base or farther. Well Gonzalez's run doesn't really mean that much. So Martinez will play behind Gonzalez at first with one out that'll bring up Stewart who's one for three. matchup is Adeki Rabu and Roger Clemens. And there goes Gonzalez down to second and the throw is not at time. As I mentioned, they were not paying any attention to Gonzalez with the Yankees and a three run lead. And with Tino playing back and uh, the high leg kick of Darren Holmes, Gonzalez took off for second base. And I suppose if he wants a stolen base that that badly give it to him and uh, all you're trying to get is outs. You want to get that 27th out before a lot of guys get on base. He's 53 and 14 here at Yankee Stadium. By far the best home record of anybody in baseball. Yankee bench awaiting that uh, 103rd win. As home is behind now, three and one. Now it's three and two. strike three. It looked like Stewart was looking for a breaking ball maybe outside. And Stewart has struck out two gone. With a 3-2 count in the top of the ninth three. inning and you're down three runs, you can't be looking that that ball is on the inside half of the wow. plate. I know it. Oh my heavens. You can't be looking for anything other than a fastball. Well the Yankees one out away from winning eight to five and this Return back to Yankee Stadium first game of this four game series and a tough hitter will step in Sean Green. Green is two for three. and it's up towards Jeter. And Jeter makes the catch of the Yankees will win it. 
eighth to five and a nice job done by Darren Holmes pitching the eighth in the ninth inning. As Joe Torrey continues his rehab assignment as Holmes and Nelson work their way back to top form here in 1998 before the playoff start. And another big night from uh, Paul O'Neill. Another two run home run night. Paul O'Neill swinging the bat very good. But I think the big thing tonight, other than the second inning, I think they found Andy Pettit. And uh, if Andy Pettit can pitch like he did in the uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth innings, they've got a real jewel. All right, TJ, we'll be back with the wrap up right after this. Yankees win it eight to five. Well, that's it from Yankee Stadium. The final score once again, New York winning it 8-5 over Toronto. Please join us again Saturday at 4 o'clock as the Yankees again host this Toronto Blue Jay Ball Club.